Hi friends, today just less than two weeks before Christmas and three weeks before the end of 2020 and the start of a new year, we've journeyed together toward a closer relationship to God and through the understanding and practice of spiritual disciplines. In this final session, we consider kindness. Kindness, a discipline like all the others that is meant to help us live out our faith and to grow spiritually. I'm glad you're with us today, and I hope that as we reflect on kindness, you can bring to mind a number of the ways that you have benefited from and have offered kindness to others, knowing that it was transforming you and the others into the likeness of Jesus Christ. More kindness would make the world a better place. Can I get an amen to that? More kindness would make the world a better place. Did you know that Friday the 13th of November was World Kindness Day? And I don't know about you, but I wonder how did you observe that day? Were you aware that you were receiving kindness, giving kindness, offering it to people on that very day? Let's start with the beginning of kindness. How do we and where do we receive kindness? Well, first of all, it's one of God's attributes. It's one that God was demonstrating, exhibiting, even in the creation. It's evident in everything that God made. Everything has a purpose and all our needs are met by God's generous, compassionate design. Now, some of that has been truncated, it's been abused, it's been redirected, and how unfortunate. But through kindness, much of what God intended through creation can be restored and rededicated to God's purposes. Remember in the scriptures, I am the Lord who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness on earth. For in these I delight, declares the Lord. That's the quote from Jeremiah, the ninth chapter, the 24th verse. Let's remember that God is the beginning, the one in whom we believe and in whom we worship and in whose life we hope to embody ourselves. God didn't stop there though with kindness, justice, and righteousness. God gave us his son and his kindness raises the bar and actually defines kindness for all of us as the selfless, compassionate, merciful attitudes and actions towards others. And as such, kindness is high impact as a spiritual practice. Jesus' kindness was shown every day in every relationship. But think about these. Jesus' kindness was shown in his healing of the lepers, in his dining with sinners, in revealing God's love toward a Samaritan woman in forgiving those who hurt him, and in promising a thief a place in paradise. Oh, I could go on and on and on. These weren't just acts of kindness, though. They reflect a way of life with Jesus, consistent and genuine, and more than words, often these were expressions of the heart through his hands and feet. And we're called to that same way of life, a life of kindness that finds an expression of the heart through our hands and our feet. Did you know that there are over 500 references to kindness in scripture? Now, sometimes other words are used for kindness. Some words are translated differently, but we find that compassion, mercy, kindness, though they're used somewhat interchangeably, are a part of this uh, wonderful treasure of scripture that we have referring to kindness. We remember in Micah chapter 6, verse 8, I know you could say it by heart. Clearly, God intended that we continue what God started, transforming the world with kindness. You remember those words. He has told you what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? but to do justice, to love kindness, 
and to walk humbly with your God. That's from Micah chapter 6, verse 8. Remember too in Luke's gospel that Jesus spoke of this same kindness as he said, love your enemies, do good, and, uh, excuse me, love your enemies, do good, and lend, expecting nothing in return. And your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. I'm going to say that one more time because I messed it up. First, but love your enemies and do good, and lend expecting nothing in return. All of these are acts of kindness, right? To love your enemies, to do good, to lend expecting nothing in return. These are acts of kindness. And your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. Now, what does this do? Again, it raises the bar. It reminds us of the high cost and potential risk in being kind. And yet, that's the very thing that God's asking of us. You may remember um, not long ago, about a week ago maybe, a story that came out of um, Minnesota and a Dairy Queen where 900 visitors to the Dairy Queen drive through that day had uh, paid it forward, had made um, attempts to pay for someone else's meal. And this was a Facebook post. And that's, that's where I saw it. And then I saw Hope Vickers, our very own Hope Vickers, had also entered a post as a uh, reflection on that act of kindness. And you might remember, if you saw it, that she recalled a similar experience from 2006. And she could name the person who had paid for her meal unexpectedly and expecting nothing in return. Um, what a beautiful gift. Kindness has that kind of impact. It changes the way we look at people. It changes the way we look at things and circumstances and folks. This has been a tough year. And kindness is what's seeing us through. Remember, too, that in Galatians 5.22, we find in the list of fruit of the Spirit that this is one of the same uh, alongside the um, fruit of the Holy Spirit, gifts that are given to us and are then borne out the, through the way we live and interact with other people as fruit, the produce, produce of this same Holy Spirit indwelling us. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. It's a great list. Kindness is right there in the middle and central to our understanding of how we are called to live and how we're empowered to live by this same spirit living in us. It's the spirit of the living God, the spirit of Christ, the spirit that gives us all the tools, all that we need to be like him. I am so blown away by the generosity of God and know that without that, I could never um, exhibit the same kind of love that he did every day. We are also invited to take these gifts and then to massage and nurture and develop them in a way that will reflect everything that God in Christ is to us. I also appreciate so very much the um, words in a psalm that reminds us that when <clears throat> someone speaks the truth in love, um, offering a corrective or hard truth, it may hurt at first. It may feel like a betrayal if it's a word that's coming to us from a friend. And yet it may be exactly what we need. It may be a word that will call us back to ourselves, to our relationship with God or to a relationship with a family member or a friend. It may be a way of calling us back. And that's where once in a while, kindness can hurt. And yet it may be exactly 
what we need. And in the long run, we're able to see that. We're able to gain some perspective and appreciate what someone has offered to us out of risk and yet out of love to help us to find that better way. It's uh, been said, kill them with kindness. Yes, when someone has spread a malicious rumor or has treated you with disrespect or hostility, when these things occur, the temptation is to respond with anger or retaliation. And yet I think fundamentally, if we can respond with kindness, we take the high road. We take that better, more courageous way, the way that God used kindness to bring some people to repentance. Over and over again in the scriptures as in our lives, we see people who are attempting to offer kindness to us and we know how it makes us feel. It makes our day. There was a time when, uh, and this has been mentioned uh, a couple of times previously, when in our church, Wrightsville United Methodist Church, um, and I was the pastor at the time, so I remember vividly some of the discussions around 10 brave Christians. We put out an appeal. Can we find 10 brave Christians who will commit to a number of practices every day for 30 days? That's it, 30 days to um, possibly transform our lives and the lives of people with whom we interact. And this was based on a book called The John Wesley Great Experiment. And with 10 brave Christians, we agreed to pray every day. And this was to be at 5.30 in the morning when we would have very few distractions. Um, we would be meditating on scripture that is assigned. And with that scripture, really processing what God is saying to us in the moment. We would agree to a random act of kindness and we would agree to come back together and talk about our experiences um, and commit also to tithing during those 30 days. Do you know what was the hardest of those tasks to uh, do each and every day? It was the random act of kindness. I'm hastening to tell you that. The amazing thing is we all second guessed ourselves before we engaged in that random act of kindness. Would it be appreciated? What did the scripture say? Without expectation of reward or anything in return. Would it be a person who is worthy that we offer this gift to? Again, not our call. What if we offer a random act of kindness for just one when there are many who are in need? Well, for just one, it could be a transforming moment. I think about all the ways that we hesitate, we, we check ourselves, we wonder if even um, the, the gift is rejected. What would we do? How would we feel? It's not about us. Howard Thurman um, has said, and I think he's so wise in offering these words, it is much easier to worship Jesus than to follow him. We are challenged. We are invited. We are called to follow as Christian disciples. And where are we called? How are we called to follow? with each of the practices that we've lifted up over the course of this year. And now we offer this one more, kindness. It is indeed easier to worship him than it is to follow him. But when we choose to follow, we do find ourselves receiving blessings by the score. It's Christmas, folks, almost. And I hope that yours will be a time of joy, a time of peace and reflection, a time of kindness given and kindness received. After all, the gift of kindness is Christmas, the birthday of our King, our Savior, 
the Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless you. I have enjoyed many of the uh, times of preparation for these sessions and uh, have missed so very much interacting with you. And I know that watching a video is never quite the same. I always feel that myself, that, that this is some um, small, pathetic offering that does not take the place of conversation. We're people of relationship, people of community, and I long for that with you. And while we cannot have it, I'm thankful for the technology that is available to us. Again, Merry Christmas. Let's look forward to 2021 when all of these practices, now much more familiar and much more readily practiced, will be a part of the community that we rebuild together. God bless.